One of the experiences I had in South America, on the hillside, uh, there was a chapel with a huge cross over the top. And, and uh, as I looked over, the sky was breaking open, blue sky was coming through, the beginning of the sun was shining. But over the top of that cross, there were three distinct rainbows. It brought me such a, a peace to see that and to know that was there in a special way. Now, I, I share that with you because when we look at the scriptures today and we look at Father Terry and, and so on, we look and see Jesus was a man who somehow or other, because of his love for us, was able to paint our world differently. The rainbow brought that out. Paints us in different ways. When it was hurt, he brought the color of light. When people were sinful, the color of forgiveness. When we were lonely, the color of compassion. But he colored our lives. And the color that brought that out was the color of love. Love given, love received, love shared. Where has Father Terry colored your life? What are the colors? that he brought into your life, my life too, all of us. Were they colors that gave us hope? Yes. Were they colors that deepened our faith to say to God, yes. Were they colors that brought us compassion and hope in our lives? And again, we must say, yes. Like the disciples on the road to Emmaus, 
Terry, in his journey of trying to follow the risen Lord, took him to many places and involved him in many different mission ministries along the way. As our Resurrectionist mission statement says in a different place, we seek to reach out to all people through our pastoral educational ministries, but especially join in solidarity to reach out to those diminished by unjust structures. Terry taught at St. Jerome's for a number of years. He was principal, I believe, for four years. And Terry described to me the 18 enjoyable years, as he said, he had in Rome. Terry served as the Econom General on the Curia, looking after the finances of the General Curia in Rome. Terry enjoyed Rome, and he enjoyed the people of Rome. And Terry enjoyed being the ambassador of CR hospitality to those who came to Rome. Nevertheless, Waterloo was Mecca for Terry. It was the holy city. It was where he was born and bred. It was Waterloo that Terry called home. And local legend has it that one day, Bishop Robert Kurtz, former Bishop of Bermuda, and Terry were driving down Herb Street. And when they came to the corner of Herb and King, Terry turned to Bishop Kurtz and said, Hey Bob, this is the center of the universe. <laughs> Terry now dwells in his new and eternal home, and we trust that Terry enjoys the peace, happiness of eternal life with our Heavenly Father. Terry spent a great deal of time in hospital before he died, <coughs> seven months, 21 days to be exact, and we were all disappointed that he did not fully recover from his Operations and medical interventions. Cancer is such a wicked beast that devastates people's bodies and people, people's lives. But Terry seemed so matter of fact about his cancer, he didn't complain. Remember the day that Terry said that he was no longer going to quarterback his medical situation. He would let things happen as they came and as they unfolded to him. And he was very grateful for the medical support he received while he was in hospital. He appreciated the interventions of the doctors and the nurses. Now, many of you have known Terry as Doc, or Doc McGuire. And that came from when Terry was in his first year of religious life that's called novitiate. He was the infirmarian. He was the first aid man. And I'm told that he took his job seriously and that he did a good job. And Terry never lost that sensitivity to the well-being of his fellow resurrectionists. And certainly the same spirit emulated his work as the superior of Resurrection Manor for six years. Terry had a special place in his heart for the missions and the missionaries that worked in those missions. There was never a mass that Terry attended that went by when everyone was invited to pray at the prayer of the faithful, that Terry never prayed for the missionaries of our resurrectionist community and the missions that we served. And true to the heart of our mission statement, Terry's heart was very much aligned with those who suffered from unjust structures, the poor, the marginalized, the disenfranchised, those who never had the privileges and opportunities that we often have here in North America. In some ways, Terry was a bit of a paradox. Some described him as a very private person. Others described him as a very social person. Perhaps one of the most significant observations that someone made to me was that Terry was a man who was at peace with himself. Terry knew himself, and he knew what had to be done. Terry was also tenacious. When he had his two hip operations, he did those exercises that needed to be done to get him back on the golf course. <laughs> and during his final bout with medical issues, Terry manifested the tenacity of Job we hear him proclaim in our first reading when Job says, I know that my Redeemer lives, 
I know that my Redeemer lives. Terry believed, along with Job, that he, from his flesh, would look upon God. Terry lived deeply the Paschal mystery, and now he shares in the joy of his master. My brothers and sisters in Jesus, we will remember him. For remember how Terry sought to accompany the people of God with whom he shared the gift of relationship. Whether it be some form of chaplaincy he was involved with, or his participation on a particular board or committee, or participating in some social endeavor, Terry believed that when he was with the people of God, he was a resurrectionist priest. And as such, he needed to laugh their laughs, sing their songs, and dance their dances. And when amongst the people of God, there were Christ, in the face of the pains and wounds of life, Terry was there with those person or persons to walk with them to the Valley of Tears. Terry was a resurrectionist priest who sought to bring about the resurrection of society. Through sacraments, he celebrated the Word of God, he proclaimed the rites and rituals and liturgies he led. By the relationships he entered into, Terry sought to be an instrument of hope and joy for God's world. Like St. Paul, Terry has fought the good fight. He has finished the race. He has kept the faith. Terry has given glory and honor and praise to God by the way he has lived his life. Terry searched for God all his life, and now God has allowed Terry to find him. And it is into the hands and heart of God that we now entrust him. So Terry, it's now time to say goodbye. We give praise and thanksgiving to God for the ways in which you have blessed us by your presence in our lives. Eternal rest grant unto Terry, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May his souls and all the souls of the faithful departed rest in the mercy and peace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise be Jesus risen. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Father Terry was obviously a spiritual leader for many, many of the people in our family. Father Terry married my wife and I, baptized our children, blessed our house, and was ever-present at all of our family get-togethers, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Easter, my parents' birthdays. He'll be sorely missed.